Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanted to share five different tech tools that I love using with kindergarten, first, and second grade students. So on this channel before, I have shared a video right here, sharing some of my favorite educational apps, along with another website that was really great for distance learning, which will still be, those sites are still applicable now for using them in the classroom. But in this video, I have five different ones that I really want to highlight, and I'm gonna share why I like them, and what I like to do with them, basically how my students use them in the classroom. If you're new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and strategies with teachers just like you. So if you are ready to see these tools, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Tool number one I love using with my K through two students is Seesaw. Now I'm not gonna go super into detail about Seesaw. I've already made two videos on some teacher strategies for using Seesaw. They look like this and like this. So if you're looking for more in-depth tutorials on like how to upload lessons and organize things, go check those out. But some of the reasons I love using Seesaw in the classroom include its ability to really let students showcase their learning in different ways. I just love how easy Seesaw makes it to create interactive activities for your students. Students can do interactive math games like this one right here. There's all sorts of sorts they can do. And this is an example of an activity I created specifically for Seesaw. But with all of distance learning last year, Seesaw actually has a huge library of free activities that teachers have made as well. And of course, there are lots of teacher authors like myself who created Seesaw specific activities and sell them on TPT. I also love Seesaw for the microphone and camera capabilities that it has. It's a great way if you assign students like decodable sentences or decodable passages, not only can they read it on their own in a center and maybe like mark off the words you're looking for them to mark off or answer any questions, but they can actually just press that record button and they can record themselves reading it. So that way you can listen to them. It's a great way that, you know, if you can't reach every single student, but you want them working on something similar, um, you can assign a passage that is differentiated for them. And then later when you have time to check in, you can actually just listen to their recording to see how they did. And lastly, as a parent, I love Seesaw for the parental involvement that it offers because students can share their learning and you can get a little sneak peek inside their classroom as the parent. If you already use Seesaw and love it, let me know down in the comments because I swear I think that was one of the biggest uh, learning apps and technological tools that really took off last year. Another tech tool I love for K through two classroom is Flipgrid. Now I have used this a lot in my own grad school classes as a way to share different lessons and ideas with other classmates, but I was thinking about how we could use it in a K through two classroom and I really love the video capabilities. Similar to Seesaw, students can actually just go ahead and record a quick video of themselves and it's great because their classmates can watch those videos too. Personally, I would use it to have students respond to different readings that they're doing. In my classroom, we did have a lot of independent reading time while I was working with small groups on phonics and word work activities. And during that independent reading, I usually gave students a task and it was usually like a comprehension type task, maybe read a story and then try to retell it in your own words or read a story and try to identify the main characters. And you know, in a first grade classroom, there can be a lot of of limitations to that because students might not be able to write it down on a post-it note or they might not have those writing skills just yet. So if we give them something like Flipgrid, they can go ahead and during their reading response, they can read their story and then quickly just share a video with that reading response. As the teacher, you have limited time to meet with each and every student. So this would give you another quick way to kind of check in and watch their video responses to see Hmm, are they really able to retell this story or can they actually identify who the main characters are and kind of check in in an informal assessment. So in Flipgrid, you basically make, like here would be my class, Mrs. Jones Literacy. I didn't go ahead and make a, um, add like images and stuff yet, but just to show you. And you would add your students to the class and then you can make different topics. So here's like a retelling option. So after reading The Gingerbread Man, please retell the story in your own words. 
So students could do this at a private center. You could give them, you could even add a link right here to a gingerbread man story that you wanted them to read or listen to on YouTube or something. And then they can go ahead and retell the story in their own words. So they would click add response. And it's pretty simple. My computer's being a little bit slow, but essentially it'll come up with a, let's use your microphone and camera. And it will come up with a video like this and students will just click this button and you can decide how long you want the video to be. Here I have two minutes. Um, so they would click this and record themselves telling the retelling of the gingerbread man. So they could do it right here. And when they are done, they could just press next. They can edit it if they need to. Um, in the younger classes, I usually don't have them edit it. They just can click next. Um, no, they don't need to add anything if they want to. It already has their name included. Um, they can say gingerbread man. They don't have to actually type anything and they can just press submit. Done. Once it is done, you will see the responses on here and your students can actually watch each other's responses, which is another fun thing about Flipgrid. As you can see, it is really easy to set up. You can just make different uh, little tasks for them to do and then they upload their video within that task and they can watch all their classmates. If your students have Chromebooks, it is really easy to just send them that one link that will go to the task so they can upload it directly. My understanding is Flipgrid does have an app as well. Personally, I have not used the app. After reading just a few of the reviews, it does sound like it's a little bit clunky, but it sounds like it they're having difficulties when they're trying to edit a video, which isn't something that I usually have my K through two students do. I usually just have them record for two minutes straight or as long as their response is without editing it. So I don't think that should be a problem. Some ideas for using Flipgrid include reading responses, like having them retell a story, identify the main characters, summarize the story, make connections, point out different vocabulary words that they learned, and so much more. It's a fun one you should really check out. Tech tool number three I love for K through two classrooms is PebbleGo. Now this is like an educational database that the passages and information is directly made for kindergarten, first and second grade students. So it's in, you know, student friendly language and it is easy to digest. It's set up in small little chunks of learning and it's so much fun for my kids. Now this one is not free. I believe your school has to have a license and honestly, I'm not sure how much that is. But once your school does have this, I know my school librarian back in Vegas, she would organize that for everybody and we could use it in our classrooms. And my favorite way to use this is during my all time favorite writing project of the year, which is when we create our all about books. Now in that unit, students will each pick an animal and they will try to research it, find out as much as they can, and then they will write a nonfiction book about that animal. Now, as the teacher, it can be difficult to find bunches of different texts at all your students' reading levels, especially in like first grade, where they're kind of all over the map in terms of their reading ability. So PebbleGo is a great one because it also has an audio button where students can listen to the material as well. Here's a little sneak peek at what it looks like. Here's what it looks like when you sign into PebbleGo. There are science topics, biographies, social studies, and animals. Let's dive into animals. So here you can, if you go over each of them, it actually reads it aloud too. So if your students can't read it yet, they'll know what it says. Dinosaurs, invertebrates. So let's go look Animal at, agents. let's see, pets, pets and farm and animals. Farm animals. Let's go to pets. And then they can click on an animal that they want dogs. to learn about. Let's go to dogs. Oh gosh, it goes even, even further. Let's do sporting group. We, golden. Let's learn about golden retrievers. So here in each one, you have like a size, tab, body, life cycle, care, and fun facts. So if students are, aren't able to read this on their own, they can click this little button and it will read it for them. They can see the pictures bigger if they wanted to. They get to learn the life cycles. They have um, vocabulary words for them to focus on. And then they also have down here, a video that students can watch to see golden retrievers in action. Let's take a look. Cute. And then they usually have an audio as well. So when you click that, you can hear it barking. 
and you can click out and then they also have a bunch you can just search let's say they want to learn about a giraffe giraffes let's take a look same thing habitat food life cycle some fun facts um this one doesn't have an audio this has range so it shows you where giraffes can be found so there's some maps in here it is a great database for students to take a look at and learn about all different topics as you can see, it is really cool, highly engaging. It has those videos and audio sounds of different animals. And it's not just animal based. As you saw, there are some social studies topics, biographies and more. And last but not least, tech tools number four and five are two apps that you can use both on a computer and on your iPad, and they are phonics based. So these are great. The first one is a twofer. It is endless alphabet and endless wordplay. Now this app is really engaging because it has students really focusing on that sound. And as they create and make different words, the letters kind of come to life and they make that sound over and over. They dance. It adds a lot of visual appeal as well as again, focusing on that sound sound to match the graphemes. Now in Endless Alphabet, students actually create a bunch of different words, so it is wonderful for vocabulary. And after they learn a new vocabulary word, there's a little video that explains what the vocabulary word means with some images. And in Endless Wordplay, students are again listening to that sound, they're building different words and building different sentences that again come to life right in front of their eyes. Let me show you what this one looks like. <laughs> He dipped the net to see what he'd get and pulled out a wet jazzy lobster quartet. And that last tech tip tool number five, another phonics one, is teach your monster to read. Now, this one's completely free on your desktop. I think they did some sort of deal with um, Usborne, Usborne, I actually don't know how to say that, Usborne Books. I've seen it so many times, never heard it out loud. Anyway, if your students do have access to a computer, it's completely free, or you can purchase the app. In Teach Your Monster to Read, you are this little monster down here, and you kind of move around. This king, this is the beginning level, so you're learning about different letters and letter names and letter sounds. So we actually just learned about the letter A, and so we can go to the squirrel and play a game. Let's see what it says. App to free the villager, tap on all the buttons that make the sound Ah. So here we're working on the sound ah. So students have to free this little squirrel villager guy and they need to find the letters that make the sound ah. Ah to free the villager. Tap on all the buttons that make the sound. So in this one, we have to review an old sound that we learned and students would have to go ahead and click on the flowers that have the s sound. So basically students will continue going through all these little games and right now he is trying to collect everything and the king will help him fix his little rocket ship right here and he can go over here and do another game. As students learn all these different letters here, P, S, A, and T, they will listen to the sounds and they will have different activities to identify each sound and letter. And as you progress throughout the level, students will learn how to read different words and it will progressively get harder. Both of those phonics apps are a whole lot of fun. So if your students have, you know, iPads or computers that they're able to use during literacy centers, that would be a great thing for them to do. So there you have five different tech tools that I love using in kindergarten, first and second grade. Have you used any of these? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have other apps or websites that either help you as the teacher or help your students and they really enjoy them, please let us know down below. I love reading the comments and collecting different ideas and strategies that we can all look at as they watch this video. So please go ahead and comment it down below. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of every new video I upload. And currently I upload videos on Thursdays and Sundays with some teacher tips for you. See you in the next one. Bye.